Hello. Hello. How's it going, Alice? We're good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, very good. Excited to be here. Sweet. <laughs> well, it's just us at the moment. Um, <laughs> we have a few more people joining soon. Yeah, yeah, totally. And if not, whatever, I'll tell you updates about how everything is going. <laughs> cool. How's the week been? Busy. Oh, nice. Busy, busy, busy. Busy is good. Yes, busy is indeed good. Good morning or afternoon, everyone. Um, we're just waiting for a few more people to join. Thank you. Hi, Quinton. Um, we'll just wait for maybe a, a minute or two. And Morning, Alex. Long time no see and all that. <laughs> yes, indeed. There you go. Now you can actually see me. Nice. I know, right? I've decided to have different virtual backgrounds based on the call I'm on. That's a good <laughs> idea. Quinta looks beautiful back there. It's my non-virtual background. Yeah, it looks <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, where is that place? Uh, this is uh, South San Francisco Bay, so... Uh, Los Gatos area. Uh, that no, hills that doesn't Los look Gatos. like Bay Area at all. <laughs> but I, I guess I haven't been driving around much lately. <laughs> Santa Cruz Mountains. Yeah, also from the non backgrounds. Um, uh, I do actually have backgrounds for KubeCon that are coming out. I sent these out to the ambassadors yesterday. There is a link over in chat to the GitHub that I have tossed the virtual backgrounds into, so you can be all very festive for next week. Oh, nice. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I was having Zoom issues. 
Oh, good morning. Backgrounds don't work for me because my hair color matches the back of the screen. Uh, I've tried everything. Or a hat. <laughs> or just like blend in, you know, like you're part of the furniture. It's fun, you know. <laughs> All right. I think I think we can. I think we can. We're good to start. Um, so, so first off, we have um, uh, Dimit. Rios, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, um, who's uh, just asked to have a few minutes um, to give a quick update on um, some new community meetups that he's um, helping organize with a focus on, on storage on Kubernetes. Um, so I, I just asked if he, if he could share um, some of the progress he's making and, and if maybe uh, we can figure out if there's anybody on the SIG who wants to um, uh, help uh, participate in some of these meetups or provide any content for these meetups. Over to yeah. you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Alex. Uh, yeah. So basically, it's it's as Alex mentioned. I'm I'm running meetups that are and forming a bit of a community around data on Kubernetes and trying to just have it be a place where people can share their experiences and learn from each other. And so uh, I, I'm going to share my screen real quick. I mean, I have four slides, so it's not going to be death by PowerPoint by any means. But uh, yeah, I, I guess I, I got introed from Alex and uh, I'm Demetrius. I've been primarily playing in the MLOps space, um, but Kubernetes was something that was very, very on the top of everyone's mind, especially when you talk about Kubeflow and uh, and it was like, hey, there needs to be something where we can we can all come together and talk about data when it comes to Kubernetes and potentially evolve, mature the space a little bit. So what we decided on was having this this uh, meetups on one hand, and then the Slack like workspace on the other hand, and. From there, you know, I wanted to make it just as open and as in inclusive as possible. Um, and I wanted to get people that are doing, you know, are talking about war stories of whatever it is that has to do with data, doing data on Kubernetes or talking about best practices, talking about operators, talking about databases, whatever the, you think is interesting in this field. Um, storage, obviously, that's that goes without saying. I think here today, and it's been uh, really nice. We started about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. We just had our our fourth meetup, and we have them on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Um, and so, so 9 a.m. PST. Sorry, uh, 5 p.m. if you're in the UK, and I don't know what that is in the Far East, but uh, I imagine you you can do the math. So. I, right now, I wanted to just present here because I, I imagine there's a wealth of wisdom from everyone that is in this, this SIG. And I'm looking for speakers. I'm looking for people who are interested in just getting involved in any way. And if you want to come attend one, see how it is. We, I normally run it either like, like kind of like a podcast interview, so it's a light lift, or it can be more of like a talk where you share slides and all that. So it's, it's up to you, really. But um, yeah, like I mentioned, we have this Slack workspace. And I can share these uh, links in the chat right now in case anyone wants to join uh, and then give their, their two cents. And then the last thing is, like, I would really love to see it become something where people can bring their own initiatives, start their own, <clears throat> excuse me, start their own series around whatever it is that you think is is interesting. Maybe, you know, you say, well, hey, I really want to talk about um, security, or I want to talk about something that is is top of mind for you. And we can have a series or an initiative around that. So that's it. That's my my pitch, as we could say. And I hope to see see all you there. If there's any questions, of course, feel free to ask that also. Um, no, that, that, that go sounds ahead, good. Um, Thanks. I, I had a question, if I may. 
take a second. Um, is the purpose to, to capture user stories or to build APIs around data? I know there's a, a data protection work group in Kubernetes that you may want, I don't know if you attend that, but that would possibly have some crossover into yeah. this. Oh, that's, that's great to know for sure. I will, I will reach out to them also, but yeah, it's not really. So the interesting thing about this is it's not really working towards anything specific. Like it's not like we're getting together and we are creating um, projects around working like working groups. Um, we're not doing any open source or anything. It's more just like you were mentioning, like, yeah, user stories or uh, best practices, things that you, like I have next week, we're having a guy on and he's talking about how he just banged his head against the wall for two months straight, trying to set up a certain um, pipeline or, or his stack. And, and he wants to tell people, the learnings from that whole thing and so that hopefully they don't repeat the same thing that he went through and don't have to go through that same pain well i definitely see the value so thank you for sharing yeah no problem and thanks for letting me on here let me let me talk i had i had a, a quick well, first of all i think this is a fantastic idea i think there's a huge amount of uh, wealth of of kind of untapped information in this space people as you say struggling with you know these are difficult problems I think data on cloud computing in general is hard um, and and data on kubernetes is arguably even harder um, and and as you say people have solved these problems but but the the information is not you know readily available out there so we we actually had a, a, a similar initiative here to uh, kind of uh, canonicalize some of these experiences so that people could reuse them. And uh, I think Luis is on the call. He was kind of uh, spearheading this. We were trying to create a catalog essentially of, of common use cases uh, that we could then document and say, this is a good way of doing this thing. And if you're doing something like this, like here's a kind of a recipe that we know works. Um, and I don't want to paraphrase or put words in your mouth, Louise. Maybe you want to talk about that, but it, it might be interesting to explore the overlap between these, uh, between your uh, meetups and this initiative, because it seems like there's a lot of common kind of goals there. I think what we had in mind was like a bunch of documents, and it sounds like what you have in mind is a bunch of interviews, stroke presentations, but, but it seems like there might be a way to distill one into the other or vice versa. Absolutely. I, um... I really like it and I look forward to attending and probably even participating. I think this is great. Um, and uh, one of the things, just like Quinton said, we were looking to do this model where <clears throat> we don't only talk about the, you know, the reference designs of, of storage, uh, which we, we have documents about, but also what, how customers view storage and data and their applications and, you know, they get consumed from, and you know, it's one way to be an expert in just how data moves, right, and applications, but another one is how, how does it get consumed and how it gets used in Kubernetes. And those, those are many questions are still unanswered, you know, for a lot of people, and, and it, this is a great channel for it. Yes, yes, that's, that's exactly right. Like, that whole idea of, hey, let's get together, let's share this knowledge because it's untapped and we need to be talking about it or writing it. I mean, I did have the idea of after the meetups taking, what I'm doing is I'm taking some of these gems that people talk about and I'm writing them down and putting them onto Medium. And so um, I'll connect with you offline, Luis, to see about maybe there's some crossover that we could do for docs that you potentially already have. Um, but I love the idea of, hey, this is something that people do over and over. Here's a best practice for it. That is, that's yep. awesome. Yeah, exactly right. I also can uh, tap us, you know, people's in the community uh, and uh, also participate too. That'd be great. So, yeah, I would love that. So I'll um, I'll connect with you offline because I'm definitely looking for speakers. I'm looking for people to share their wisdom and share share their knowledge. How, How are we still doing meetups? 
It's every week. So on Tuesdays every week, um, I would like to start doing, so these are live meetups that I do on Tuesdays, but as it grows, what I'd like to start doing is also creating like a podcast that's not live. So it's not like contingent on trying to get a lot of people there and, you know, a lot of publicity. It's just like, Hey, we have this following already. So people listen to us, they subscribe to us on YouTube or, or um, podcast land. And we put out different series of podcasts. One other quick question. Um, so, so it seems like there's a lot of overlap between what that group does and what this group does. And I don't view that as a bad thing at all. Um, uh, I think, you know, historically this group has focused a lot on the actual infrastructure and the, the, you know, layers of the storage stack and, and all the various open source projects. Uh, and we tried to get this sort of use cases uh, analysis and publication going. Uh, and I think it's, it's sort of been tricky. I'll, I'll put it that way. Um, but I, it, I would love to see an ongoing collaboration between the meetups and, and the SIG. Um, you know, one, one model that comes to mind is maybe you kind of give, come and give us a, a 10, 15 minute sort of summary per month or something like that. It says, here's the really cool stuff we did this month. Here's, you know, stuff you should probably go and check out. Here's a podcast. Here's a this, that, and the next thing. I think that would be super useful to this group. And then I don't know how, you know, maybe the reverse might also make sense. Maybe uh, somebody from the SIG does a, you know, whatever quarterly presentation to your uh, meetups uh, just to kind of keep the two groups in sync. It doesn't sound like they need to merge into one, but, but they do probably need to kind of know what each other's doing uh, on a regular cadence. Totally. I would love that. I would definitely, I welcome that. I think that's, that's an awesome idea too, so that we're all in the loop. Makes a lot of sense. All right. Thanks, thanks, to, uh, Demetrius, and uh, I'm sure we'll we'll have lots of interaction both ways coming up. Um, yeah, very cool. Thank you all. So, so everyone, I, I just wanted to um, to do a a, a quick uh, sync up on where we are on the the performance uh, white paper that that we've been working on. Um, so I wanted to, I'll, I'll just share my screen just so that we can um, go through it briefly. Can you see this okay? Yes. Cool. All right. So, so what I've done is I've, I've simplified some of the parts because we, we have, um, we do have a lot of content in the doc now, um, but I wanted to, to make sure that the, we're not, you know, I, I, I mentioned this at the last uh, TOC meeting. Um, I wanted to, to make sure we, we, we didn't uh, make perfect the enemy of good, so to speak, right? Um, because I didn't want to, to continually delay the document until we, we have perfection. So I've, I've simplified uh, the document and I've made the bits which are uh, which are currently complete um, a bit more scoped out, um, and I think we may be ready to to put this out for for review. So so I'll, I'm I'm just going to quickly scroll through this to to um, see if we've we're okay with this um, before we before we do a release. So the the basis of the document is is to is to provide um, some background on how. Um, end users can understand the performance and and and, and potentially do um, benchmarking, um, but also, uh, you know, highlight the the pitfalls and some of the challenges with with doing this so that they can understand more clearly how to do apples for apples comparisons in in these environments. Um, so I've started off um, with a simple introduction that basically says always test your own application in your own environment. Don't rely on published results from vendors. Um, and also I put in a link to the white paper so that people can understand, you know, the, the, the general attributes and, and terminologies of, of, the, of the storage uh, environment before they, before they start reading some of these. Um, I talk about um, the two different classes, so, so volumes and, and databases. 
um, and we have um, quite a quite a detailed um, description of what um, uh, what what forms uh, say a database workload and the volume workload, um, which which covers um, you know some of the general principles and some of the things to look at. We have a particularly well written section that covers the common pitfalls and considerations. So, for example, what tools to use to um, to measure um, what uh, um, what metrics and and, and what um, uh, type of uh, you know basic terminologies to 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 be aware of things like um, you know when you're looking at latency don't just look at um, the the measurements at a particular point in time but but look at the measurement over time so that you can kind of sort of see the different percentile numbers um, the impact of concurrency uh, to performance the the um, the impact of caching and and for example compression com compression um, things that might uh, affect the performance testing when it comes to um, you know the 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 environment uh, that you're testing in um, you know aspects that affect um, the environment in in physical infrastructure as well as in in cloud environments um, things like um, the effects of, of random writes and write amplification, the effects of encryption on benchmarking, uh, the effects of the topology, um, a note to talk about the the challenges um, of the on the client side of, of testing the performance because because you know very often the client can be can be the, the bottleneck in, in these environments. Um, Things like uh, you know the the performance implications of you know say HA and replication and, and perhaps data protection, um, and also you know some of the things to keep in mind in terms of say things that happen in the background in 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 uh, in storage systems. So you know some storage systems might have um, out of band compression or, or garbage collection or, or or something like that that that, that can affect performance. Um, and then a little bit about uh, benchmarking tools. So you know, a note about level setting the environment to make sure that you know your your things like CPU and, and network in the environment um, are comparable. Um, and then finally, we were supposed to have some section on actual on on how to actually perform. Uh, a volume benchmark in the database benchmark, and, and this is kind of where we're currently uh, a little bit stuck. Um, so we don't have we don't have um, we don't have a good uh, information on how to run the benchmarks. Um, but at this stage, I am kind of thinking that rather than hold the document for any longer, there's still value to publish the document with with this information as is. Um, with some basic, very basic um, pointers to to uh, the benchmarks that that people can run, um, and then we can iterate and maybe provide a version to um, when we're ready to to actually um, you know specify more details on how exactly to run those benchmarks or more examples on how exactly to run those benchmarks because I think understanding the performance and and some of the terminology and some of the concepts and some of the the um, the issues that, that you come across is is still important and, and there's still value there. Does anybody have any thoughts on this? Do we do we think we should do, move ahead in, in that fashion? So I have um, um, uh, so in Vitesse we actually uh, uh, so CNCF got this deal from uh, packet.net which is uh, uh, what they call it, bare metal in the cloud. <laughs> right. <laughs> it will mean something. Uh, so basically, you get bare metal instances, uh, but they are in the cloud. So uh, we, uh, what we are doing with that in Vitesse is we have started running nightly benchmarks because the uh, community has been asking, uh, like, uh, how do we, like, how do you make sure that you don't introduce performance regressions and stuff like that? 
So we just started uh, doing that just like a few days ago. Uh, we just got the environment up and running. So we run a, we have a very basic suspense stuff that we, that runs every, every night and then reports on a Slack channel. Uh, how many, what was the QPS, what was the latency uh, and that kind of stuff. Um, I, I don't know if it is completely related, but um, this is just like a very basic startup kind of thing. We hope to build more uh, features around it and stuff, but um, I don't know if that can be used as an example you know, for how to set up a benchmark and run it. But this one is obviously very test specific, uh, but, uh, and this is more driven by the fact that the community has been asking for it not necessarily, uh, so it's very uh, uh, end user oriented from that perspective. I mean, you know, again, that, 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 sounds, that sounds great, but I, I, I guess the, 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 the challenge I have right now is, um, you know, how long do we kind of delay putting the documents out to wait for somebody to write some of this in a, in a, in a way that end users can actually consume. Um, because I, 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 I think we might sort of be getting trapped in the, in the sort of idea generation where, where, you know, there are lots of p possible options for, for putting, um, for, for putting content into the documents, but I, I want to try and yeah. balance that with, with, with I, time. I, I guess that's kind of what I was, feeling uh, uh, because now just as I was talking about what we did with the test, I realized that 90% of it is specific to the test itself. There is not much to learn from for somebody who wants to run against a different system. Yeah. Right. I, like, I would suggest, I, th I think the, the first part of the, or the document up until the, the tools section right at the end is looks fantastic to be honest I don't, I don't think you need to you you might be kind of uh, focusing on what's missing and and what took so long but but I mean the document that you went through looks fantastic uh, and I would publish it as is I would actually make the following suggestion to to remove the last few sections because they're incomplete um, add a section of links to other information uh, the the test benchmarking uh, wiki page or whatever it is can be one of those links. Uh, the others can be some of those tools and have a very explicit comment at the end in the conclusion that volume two will cover um, specific benchmarking tools and how to best use them or something like that. Um, right. and, and one sentence. Uh, and then people know that, that there's a volume two coming and then hopefully we can actually kind of set a timeline and, and, and have a target date for that by you know whatever it is it doesn't sound like a huge job but you know having said that it's it's a year in the making and i guess it's uh <laughs> it's proven tough so so maybe it's more difficult than it sounds but uh but yeah it would be nice not to kind of wait another year for that hopefully and maybe yeah. someone on the can, who has experience so, like, uh, tools. just to add um uh the thing the the two things that the community uh, has been asking for. I don't, it may push the document slightly out of scope is one is chaos testing. Uh, they want to know how the software withstands uh, uh, instances going down. Uh, that is something that they've asked for. Uh, the other stuff they've asked for, uh, they asked for as a, as a problem in with test, but I think it applies to all database instances, which is version compatibility. I mean, these go into functional areas but these are like things that people are really, really concerned about when, um, when adopt when basically adopting a software project. Yeah, I, 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 I that's a that's a really good point. So, so, you know, following on from the from the original landscape white paper, we had covered the different um, storage attributes. You know, so. Performance was obviously one of them, but I think um, availability was um, another one of the key priorities. So, you know, we could say that this performance 
document um, sort of covers off the performance attributes in a little bit more detail and then we can start working on um, perhaps a document to cover things like you know availability and you know failovers and data protection and and, and, and those kind of things perhaps and and chaos testing could uh, could ultimately be um, part of that in terms of you know the the tools or or whatever else that that or, or or methodologies or whatever that you could use for that, if that makes sense. Yep. Sorry, I'm just throwing things out there based on the data I'm collecting. It's not necessarily structured, but this is yeah. Yeah, I think those are both very very important topics, and and I think we should cover them. I agree with Alex. They're not necessarily performance. Um, but but definitely a, one approach would be to dive into each of those four or five areas that we've mentioned, Alex, and, and dive into as much detail as you have with performance here. Um, the one the one uh, comment on that is that there's kind of an inevitable overlap between these areas. So you know if you have something that doesn't have redundancy, then it tends to perform better. Uh, and if you have something that doesn't uh, handle failures, then it also tends to perform better, and vice versa. Um, so one would have to just think carefully how one uh, ties them all together. I think you, one can fairly easily deal with them all in isolation. I think it's where the overlaps happen that it becomes complicated. And I'm not entirely mm. sure on how to deal with that, but maybe you have some ideas. Yeah, in, in, in the performance document, we, we specifically sort of highlight that, um, you know, things like, the way your data is protected and your availability and and uh, consistency, for example, um, are all big factors in 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 how your performance attributes work. Um, so so we kind of point out those things, and and I think that's actually that that sort of overlap is covered quite well in the original landscape document. But but yes, you're right. It's it's we I I want to try and avoid having sort of lots of um, circular references, if you see what I mean. Yeah, that's a good yeah, point. Actually, you mentioned it, I think that the original document did deal with it well. And, and maybe we just dive into each area relatively in isolation and just refer back to the document and remind people that these things all influence each other. But this particular document is squarely about performance or durability or reliability or whatever it happens to be. Sounds like a great idea. Makes sense. All right, then. So I'll 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 send the link out. Um, uh, I'll send the link out to the to the mailing list, and um, and hopefully we can we can we can get some movement on that. Okay. Alex, I think you've done a great job pulling it together. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, oh, I agree. Thank, th thanks, Nick, uh, and th and thank you for your input as well. Um, all right then. So we have. Um, we have one other, uh, a couple more um, uh, items I, I just wanted to, to bring up. So um, the, the TIKV um, project, um, we had completed the due diligence on this and it was uh, going through the TOC votes. Um, and we realized that there was um, a potentially, uh, uh, well, not potentially, there was a core um, repo that wasn't uh, covered by the initial due diligence. So the decision was taken between the, the TOC and the project um, to to work on including um, that that additional uh, repo into the due diligence PR and then to kick and, and then to restart the, the, the voting process. Um, so, so that's uh, I'm just I'm just sort of highlighting this because we had a few discussions uh, offline um, during this week. Erin, was there anything else worth capturing from that? Oh, which core repo was it? Was it like the level DB or something? Or um... no, they. Um, so, so TIKV had uh, has a dependency on um, something called a, a placement driver. Uh, the, the repo is called PD, um, and that repo is also used by uh, TIDB, um, which is obviously you know a separate project. 
um, and so it hadn't been kind of bundled into the into the original TIKV due diligence. So um, the the the, the project team have sort of said, look, in order to kind of remove any of these um, uh, concerns, they'll they'll bundle the the placement driver uh, repo into into TIKV and and uh, and under the same sort of governance structure, um, so that it's it's it's, um, it's just part of the part of the same thing from a from a, an IP policy point of view. It will it, kind of yeah we 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 when 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 we did all the presentations and and when we did all the reviews it was just assumed um, uh, that that PD was was actually part of the part of the submission and and you know honestly it was but um, we we just needed to to I guess formalize uh, formalize that so so hopefully it's not a big deal. Um, the 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 other item I, I wanted to to quickly discuss and, and you know hopefully this doesn't won't take too much time. Um, Derek Moore um, has uh, who had previously presented the Pravega project um, is looking is looking to um, to move forward uh, with the due diligence uh, to proceed with a, an incubation submission. So. Um, just as a sort of mental refresher, Proviga is a uh, it's a project which is currently sponsored by by Dell. Um, they have uh, it's it's a it's a streaming storage product. It has um, some similarities to Kafka, for example, um, and it has it, it 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 also has some some sort of message bus similarities to to NATS. Um, if you haven't read the the incubation um, proposal, you, you it, it's 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 worth reading that because there's there's actually quite a lot of um, useful detail in there. Um, we we all thought it was a great project, and you know the presentation went particularly well, and we've we've recommended to to move forward to the to the DD stage with the TOC. Um, I'm waiting for uh, one of the TOC members to to, um, to to step forward to do the um, to to work with us on doing the DD. But but I guess we also need to figure out who's going to work on the DD from um, from our end. So so I'm. I'm I'm happy to to um, to help out myself, but um, I'm I'm quite uh, I'm quite uh, time limited over the next uh, couple of weeks. So I, I was wondering if if um, there is somebody else who could uh, help out with with the due diligence process as well. Um, for what it's worth, the the you know the proposal. Um, we, uh, I, I had been working with Derek on the on the proposal for and, and iterated a few times. So, so the proposal is actually very strong and already covers things like you know end users and use cases and things like that. So, so, so the due diligence process should be fairly straightforward, and we just need to sort of double check that the the the, the proposal sort of uh, um, matches what's what's uh, live in the project today. Just to clarify something, Alex. So this is a sandbox proposal, right? No, it's an incubation proposal. Oh, my apologies, I, I got it wrong. Okay, yeah, so it was. Due diligence is very lightweight or too non-existent, but but incubation is a pretty heavyweight process. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, that said, like I, like I said, a lot of the. A lot of the criteria for for incubation were already covered in, in a fair amount of detail in the proposal. Um, so, so I don't think I don't think there's um, uh, a lot of work to to sort of uh, document or, or dig into into uh, the detail required. But you know, we, we we have to make sure that we've 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 covered all of the all of the areas based on the guidelines documents. Yeah, I also unfortunately won't have enough time in the coming month or two. So um, yeah, if if I, I don't know, maybe you know, Luis or 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 Jing or or 
Sugu, um, you might be interested in, in, in helping out. So we, we can maybe try and make a go of it over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, maybe, I guess, another one about the stuff, right? When, oh. when do you need this? Um, well, th there isn't, there isn't obviously a, you know, a specific deadline per se, but, um, the, the proposal has been in now for, for a few weeks and, um, it would be good to sort of get a timeline when we can start, when we can start working on it. I imagine a few months, you know, if it was done in October. October, I would imagine that might be sufficient. I don't know if there are any deadlines before that for KubeCons or anything else, but um... yeah. So maybe maybe if we can if we can commit to start working on this, say uh, in in September sometime or or the beginning of October. I, think I was I was suggesting we might, we might want to kind of finish it in October, so that might require starting it. Earlier. Yeah. All right. Agreed. Let's let's let's. Um, all right. Let, let's commit to working on it in September. I I, I should have um, more time as a backfill um, in September. But again, you know, if 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 anybody else is, is available to help at that point, that would be useful too. Sorry, I just, I just want to uh, clarify. With Sh Xing, were you implying that you might be available? Uh, I think you'd be a fantastic I, candidate. I just so, yeah, I want to know the time, then I can, you know, see if I'm available. That's why I was asking. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we can we can probably work around you, you know, within reasonable limits. Uh, but if you told us you could have it done, you know, at the end of October, I think that would be good. And if you told us you could have it done in the second week of November, I think that would be better than not having it done at all for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can, I, I can take a look. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, I think that was the last thing I had on the, on the agenda for, for this meeting today. Um, so unless, uh, unless anybody had any other things they want to raise, we, we get 15 minutes back. Thank you. Have a great day. Uh, Alex, right. uh, sorry. Just oh, hi, Karen. Hi. Uh, I had put um, OpenAPI's presentation for the next week's agenda. Uh, just wanted to give a heads up that uh, also gave a proposal for moving towards integration. Yes, sorry, that's a very good point. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mention this. Um, so about a week ago, I, I believe um, Open EBS project uh, that is currently a, a sandbox project um, has put in a um, a proposal to to move forwards to uh, incubation. Um, so we're we're currently looking to put um, to put uh, an Open EBS presentation uh, on the agenda for for the next meeting on. August the 26th. Thanks, Alex. Cool. All right. Thanks, hi, everyone. Alex. Hi, Alex. This is Yanis. Hi. Oh, hi, Yanis. Uh, so, yeah, I just want one quick uh, question. Uh, so, we submitted as well, like two, two, three weeks ago, the form for the uh, sandbox projects. Yeah, I'm just wondering what is the next steps, the process, just. Uh, what's happening next? Right. So, if if you've th this is for the for the IBM, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 data, yeah. the data lifecycle project. Yes. So, if um, if you're making a um, uh, a, a sandbox um, submission, then the the TOC have a new process where they where they vote on sandbox once every month, I believe. Um, the best person to uh, the best person to speak to is is um, uh, Amy uh, uh, Perrin of the, at the CNCF. Um, but you should also be able to look at the the current status in the GitHub repo for for um, Sandbox. So there is a let me let me in fact let me just 
quickly look that up now. I don't current actually. So this is the uh, this is the, the the current board. Mm -hmm. I don't see it on there. I'll double check with with Amy, but um, effectively, yeah, yeah. effectively. That's why I, asked, I want to confirm. Yeah, I wanted to confirm that I did everything correctly. That's why. <laughs> All right, I'll 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 quickly double check that, but but okay. um, it should it should just be a simple a simple vote at the next uh, TOC call. Okay, great. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have have a good rest of your day. Bye.